Welcome back, YouTubers, to another TNA Impact Wrestling review with us, the uh, oh, the, 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 Brit the British Fist. Gotcha. In typical Hugh Grant style, it's Mr. Park in here, and this guy does not bumble over his words. He is no Hugh Grant, no such thing. It's none other than NJ. What's up? AKA the ladies' man. Anyway, make sure you guys subscribe above, above, like this video, and also comment your thoughts on this edition of TNA Impact Wrestling down in that comment section below. Make sure you contact us in the links in the description box below. Yes, indeed. And make sure you go check out TNA Swerve as well. We're part of that website. So thank you very much for having us on board, guys. Um, so this was the go-home show for the TNA Against All Odds pay-per-view. It was also an episode where they would theme it around that Star Wars um, trailer they had. Uh, I say this I say this while I'm there. I expected to see Star Wars themes, gimmicks, Velvet Sky dressed up as Princess Leia, as someone on Twitter said, but we didn't get that tonight. We just got that one and a half minute trailer, which was, I guess, good, considering we didn't get any Star Wars stuff during the show. When I think of it being Star Wars, I'm thinking, okay, Star Wars is coming mm. on now. You're a wrestling company. Releasing it in 3D. And that should be your concentration. <laughs> yeah. so, Especially on that, the Go Home show. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there wasn't too much on there, so I'll, I'll give it a pass for this time being. We open up with none other than, what in my opinion, is the best heel in the business at the moment. I don't know about you, MJ. Bully Ray. What a great way to open the show with Mr. Bully Ray himself coming out, wanting to address the world heavyweight champion of TNA, Bobby Roode. And they have that little meeting with each other on the ramp. They get straight to business, don't they? Because this segment wasn't lasting 10 minutes this time. It only got six minutes, this opener. No, Bully Ray getting straight to the point, And now he's a guy who's in the top pitch, unlike mm -hmm. it. So with a strong heel like this, he should be in the top pitch alongside the other competitors. Yes, indeed. And uh, they both talk about having a problem with Sting. Out comes Sting, of course, cricket bat in hand because he is in England. That is the theme of the day. And Sting announces that he's going to be the special guest enforcer for the Against All Odds 4-Way and that the main event tag match will be Bully Ray and Rude versus James Storm and the icon Sting. Um, pretty much quick opening segments. Well, what I'm going to say quickly is with Sting, I've said in past review, he's getting too involved and in that he should be the one who's running the show, so he should be taking a step back and making the matches and that. But recently, uh, with this UK tour... Jeff Hardy's not Jeff Hardy's way, yeah, so yeah. someone needs to replace him. But getting involved in the match at the pay-per-view, getting involved with uh, Rude and Bully Ray, it, to me, it's a bit too much. But I'll, after the pay-per-view, it should go back to normal. Well, lately, he has stayed away from the matches. And I think when they come back to the, when they come to the UK, Sting is another one of those kind of like Hogan draws, if you know what I mean, which is probably why they had him in there replacing Jeff Hardy. Um... But we, we're seeing that tension now between Rude and Bully Ray, which I think is kind of needed for that four-way match. This segment got pretty short, straight to the point, announced the main event and something for the pay-per-view. So it was decent. It was nice and short to the point. Okay, cheers. Yes. Just a shame Jeff Hardy wasn't at these tapings. Though. I mean, I think that really would have helped the, 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 the build a bit more for the pay-per-view, especially with him being one of the main figureheads of TNA. Well, with this being the last two shows before the yeah. pay-per-view, again, it was their last chance to hire all four wrestlers. Well, Jeff not being able to make it or not be here... He's just not been hyped mm. up as much as the other three have. Yes, and after that opening segment, because we didn't get an AJ Styles uh, and Kaz and Daniel segment last week because we had to have two Gary Bischoff segments, we got a nice video packages of Kaz's turn on AJ and how it all happened and stuff, which is kind of... I like the fact they did a video package just because they didn't have a segment last week and it kind of reiterates the feud itself. Well, that was a good addition to this segment. Well, with this match now leading up to the pay-per-view, mm. they need to have all these video packages just so... It's hyping it up, yeah. it's showing you why they're doing it, and they're bringing it up towards the pay-per-view. And it adds something different to the segment as well, it gives the feud some kind of meaning to it. Um, AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels, who came out with Kazarian. Um, right, before we go into this match, I will say this. Isn't this the match that's essentially going to be culminating the feud? I imagine it's going to be AJ Styles versus Daniels somewhere, maybe at lockdown or something. So, yeah, I, could, I have to bridge this between the fact that they're in the UK and they're trying to put on a show and the fact that they have to kind of stick to their guns as a go-home show and not give away too much on free TV. Well, the two things I want to say about this match is, like, with the w, uh, with TNA, they know that uh, AJ and Daniels is going to be a big match. Yeah. Obviously, it's been happening in the past. They've got a big view going. The second point I want to make is that the last match they had, they said, one more match, I'll oh, give you one more match. Oh, last time at Battle for Glory. <laughs> and then suddenly having it yeah. again. Okay. We have seen them a lot in the ring lately, haven't we? I wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing. I just think they should kind of move on a little bit. But basically, we have um, during the match we have the match itself got six and six minutes forty five seconds. I thought it was a pretty good match. You kind of expect that from these two. They haven't been in ring chemistry. Probably didn't get enough time, but decent enough time for a TV show. You had Christopher Daniels trying to get Kaz to pass him the illegal object and stuff, which I thought kind of added something to the match itself. 
with um, Daniels using Kazarian to his advantage in this match, again it shows how of a feud that this is going to build up to. Yeah. It's also made me think that Kazarian is a bit hold back. He's going really want to do this. So it's making me think that this is going to build onto a Daniels and Kazarian thing eventually and turn back to face again, but we'll have to see. Yeah, the match ends when Daniels hits AJ with the nut. So the match ends unclean, which I guess is kind of the way it should have gone. Um, just the problem is these guys have kind of faced a lot recent, faced each other a lot recently, and I maybe think gives these guys something a bit new. But at the same time, it did hype to the pay per view quite well with the video package and the match and the, the Kazarian confusion and stuff. Kind of helped hype to their match at the pay per view. AJ and Kaz again instead of having Kazarian versus AJ tonight as well as the pay per view, they had it a different way around mm -hmm. using Daniels, who's also involved yeah. in this. So it didn't make sense right before the pay per view. So I like that. Essentially, you're giving away a potential pay-per-view match, but you're using it to hype up a pay-per-view match as well. So Pretty you can look at it two ways there. Um, Samoa Joe and Magnus promo segment. Did did Magnus um, pretty much look like a star in this segment, or was it just me? He pretty much dominated the mics. Obviously, they didn't want Samoa Joe, who, again, is a part of the tag team mm. to speak, but they let Magnus obviously have his say, get his point across, and how... I think they're really concentrating on him and maybe they're building him up as well as Samoa Joe in this yeah. tag team. I mean, Magnus is very good on the mic. You give this guy five minutes on the mic, he can get himself over pretty well. Um, I find it funny how, I remember last week, the faces, these two were basically the faces. They're promising they're supposed to be the heels, but the fans fucking love these two. You've got Magnus and Joe, two guys who the UK fans really like, and they're, they're being treated like the faces. And I'd have thought Magnus would have gone out there and maybe got himself some heat, but instead he talks about coming home and saying that, you know, this this team was never going to work and stuff. And, and then we get Crimson and Morgan coming out and we get the, the typical TNA brawl with no security guards. Well, the thing is, I like how uh, Magnus brought up that they, they were paired yeah. up together and no one believed in them. They bring up the past and how they were built to this. It's actually showing that they're a tag team that are going to work out and go towards the pay-per-view. Mm. As well as the attack that came out, they were going to come out eventually because obviously they need to have themselves hyped yeah. up. And this segment did great for those two tag teams. Yeah, and the heels, if you can call them heels, uh, Samoa Joe um, and Magnus escape the room. And you have Samoa Joe flipping them the, the, the fucking finger as well, which is quite a nice way to end the segment. It was a good segment to hype the papers. Just a nice promo beforehand, nice simple promo. Yeah, I agree with that, yes. Uh, next, we had X Division action. Last week, we got Austin Aries versus Mark Haskins. This time, we had Austin Aries versus Alex Shelley versus another Brit in Doug Williams, of course, the hometown boy. Finally gets a spot on the card, and he gets to do his rolling German suplex. That, to me, was some awesome spot that was. It was a very good spot. And with this, we're seeing the uh, Austin Aries and Alex Shelley involvement in this, but not a lot of it, which yeah. is good. Austin Aries took the outside and just concentrated on... Feeling of Alex Shelley in the ring with his opponent. So yeah. yeah, um Alex but well yeah, Alex Shelley wins with the sliced bread. And you could sort of say, you know, he beat Austin Aries, it makes the challenger look strong. Um and but again, he hasn't been on TV for so long, but they, so they do need to give him some wins, even if it is over the champion, kind of similar to Tara Gale Kim the other week and Samoa Joe and Magnus last week as well. So I don't mind Alex Shelley going over here too much. It was some decent action. Like you said, there wasn't too much interaction between Austin Aries. There was a you know, it was most mostly singles action, which kind of helped this match. I think it probably could have gone on a little bit longer, but overall I was quite satisfied. Again, it hyped another match of the pay-per-view. It did, and I think it did its justice and it got a bit of uh, British uh English culture in it as well. English culture with Doug Williams. A little bit, yes. Yeah, a little bit of English culture. Um, and at this point, the show was really flying quite well for us, wasn't it? Very well, a good going show. I out the pay view matches. And then to us, this next bit kind of dragged a little bit. You know, I don't know about you guys, but we had, an, we had a Hogan Sting backstage segment, which went on way too long when they were discussing, we'll find out later, they were discussing a Garrett and Gunner match at the pay per view. Then we have video footage of Tara at Wembley Arena filming, doing an impression of Zack Ryder. What a great place this is. And then her and Gail brawl at in the streets and in the, the little arena. I don't know, it must have been a football fit or something, I don't know. But I felt they could have been in the ring tonight, especially with it being a go-home show. Well, two things I'll say about this is someone's got a free camera, and the other <laughs> thing is um, that they did something different, having backstage yeah. attacks. I think it was so different. But um, it was a bit random, Tara being outside and that, instead of being in the arena. But <laughs> other than that, it was a bit different, and it got them to on TV. Yeah. So I just felt they could have had an in-ring segment, but they had one last week, so... Especially with it being Mickey James and Velvet Skylight, who don't really have any place on the pay per view, but we'll get to that later on. Uh, then we get to the hour main events. Um, Hogan and Garrett come out for a promo. Uh, yeah, and it, it, uh, it's kind of dawned on me that Hogan, even though he's really old and you know stuff, he can still work crowd pretty well, can't he? That guy. 
We proved it at Bound for Glory. You can still work a crowd, which is a nice little quality to have even if you are old. Yeah, again, this was going well. Again, Hogan coming out again for the second mm. week, getting the fans going, yeah. saying how great it is that he's came back. The thing I did like is when he mentioned that the, whatever you're giving to me, or give to, to Gareth. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is not going to work, Hogan. Apparently the fans booed that, but they edited out, and you could tell that they edited out, and... God damn it, it's such a shame. But you had Hogan putting over Garrett, which, even though he doesn't deserve it, he's still at least putting someone else over it other than himself. Brother. Which is nice. <laughs> the best way for Hogan to put him over is to beat his ass. <laughs> what? And job to him, I doubt it. <laughs> oh, but anyway. Then we have Bischoff and Gunner coming out, and we have the announcement that it's going to be Garrett versus Gunner at the Against All Odds pay-per-view. And we'll get into some points in a bit. You have Gunner beating on Garrett, Bischoff low blowing Hogan. That was a shit low blow. But then you have Hogan coming in and cleaning house and making Gunner look like a piece of shit. And I'm just sitting there thinking, wow, all that thing you just made, you've had Gunner take out guys, put them on the injury list. And goddamn, lately he's just looked like a rat chump, hasn't he? And it's just, are they really going to feed Garrett, Gunner to Garrett like that? Just Can I look at this? Yes, it gave us all the happy thing that Hogan's came back. He's had his big thing. But at the same time, Gunner is a guy who we want to see keep progressing. Now he's going against Garrett, who's obviously in this push. Yeah. It's a bad feeling that's going to happen at the pay-per-view there. Yeah, and I think something happened here that probably should have been saved for the pay-per-view. You had Garrett Bischoff hitting his dad. While I think that's a good thing for the UK fans, probably something they should have saved for people to pay for. But overall, other than Hogan like take clean house and hitting Garrett um, Gunner and making him look a bit of a chump, it wasn't too bad of a segment. It didn't even drag on too long either, and they had to edit Edit the, edit the booze out as well because the fans did not like Garrett Bischoff at the UK tour did they? No but I think they should have just allowed it to be shown Yeah they should have really shouldn't allowed that would have really given a message to TNA that we don't want to see this um, We have a quick look at the Star Wars 3D movie um, just really didn't care but whatever like I said this show kind of this, this bit of the show kind of dragged on for us it's mainly because you had some talking segments and a little bit of backstage stuff with, around it maybe they could have had a uh, maybe they could have had one of the matches like the Daniels AJ match after this rather than the knockouts match. Um, we've got Mickey James versus Velvet Sky. Are, are either of these girls booked against all odds? No, and look, the thing I'm going to say quickly, I was going to say this for the end, I'm going to say it now, Go is that throughout the show, every segment, every match has had something to do with the pay per view. It's hyped up certain stuff. Now we get to this, it's making me think, yes, people want to see Mickey James and someone to see Velvet Sky, but it's not going to do you justice for the pay per view unless you lob in a Another knockout match, which yeah. you won't, but I don't know. Um, I will say this. It went five and a half minutes. Mickey James pretty much carried Velvet Sky to a somewhat good match, better than she probably deserved. And Velvet wins with a roll-up. Now, this kind of surprised me, especially... It seems to me either two things. Either they're teasing a Mickey James heel turn, or they're pushing Velvet to be in that title picture. Okay. And I really don't want to see Velvet Sky in the title picture. I'm just saying the way I look at this is that, yes, it was an okay match for what it was. It's not a go home show. No, and also, Velvet Sky getting a roll-up. You can see Mickey James shot. She's like, no, Kelly, I did not lose that match. Kelly, Kelly. Very true. And <laughs> I'm just thinking that Mickey James Hill, it could be so mm, different. Yeah. But at the same time, we all love Mickey James as the base. But all we can do is see what, where they go with this. Yeah, especially going into lockdown. That's essentially where this will probably end up leading. Um, so we get a video package of the UK tour. Um, which was nice, I guess, for the UK fans. Just felt a bit like filler on this going show. But at least after that, you had a video package for the Against All Odds main event four-way as well. I want to quickly touch up on the video package for the UK tour. Throughout the night, we had some random... Uh, you alright? I'm talking about yeah. CNA tonight. We had some random audience speaking. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, yeah, it's good that they're having their say, because obviously <laughs> you don't really come to them that much, yeah. but it was just more bit of a show. <laughs> yeah, they still seem like they were filling out a little bit of time. Yeah, I wonder why when we read the spoilers there wasn't much in there. <laughs> but anyway, um, we go on to the main event. But that, that video package, the Fatal 4 video package, I thought did kind of do well to help hype that match, because Jeff Hardy's not there, and you kind of need to get him on there somehow. Maybe they could have had him actually have a... Mike segment or something, not in the ring, but like in video, just to have him yeah. have his save for this match. But overall, it's got the match ready, and I guess, and this match is going to hype up the three wrestlers of the four. Yeah, uh, Sting and Storm versus Bully Ray and Robert Roode in a tag match. And I'll say this again: Did you love that bit at the start where Bully Ray, where uh, where Jeremy Borsch is announcing Bully Ray? First, he pushes him. And then he's just about to say New York, and he goes, New York City! Because he's the best heel at the moment, isn't he? That guy's so entertaining, I love Bully Ray. I think with Bully Ray, the thing I like about him, he likes to get himself out there, he wants him to yeah. be heard, him to be noticed. And I'm thinking with this, <laughs> with every little bit he does, 
either in promo yeah. segments or in the ring, he definitely gets his name out there. It's those little things sometimes it's Bully Ray which really help his character, isn't it? Like the little pushes and the little taunts to the crowd and stuff. So Bully Ray doing really well there, by the way. Um, the match itself, um, you know, it went about it went about ten minutes. I can't, I didn't really keep the time for this. But it went about ten minutes. It went into about a five minute overrun the program, which I think is needed because um, it didn't look like it was going to get enough time. But essentially, the match was worked. It was kind of more old school, kind of more crowd psychology, because you know Sting can't go in the ring. So they were kind of trying to work as much crowd psychology in there as they could. I didn't think it was as strong as last week's main event, but it was still a decent main event with three other guys from the main event of the pay-per-view in it. Well, the way they did last week, having those two matches that yeah. obviously led up to the pay-per-view was good. And then this match had them all in the ring at the same mm. time, including Sting. I'm thinking the way it was going, of course they wanted Sting to get involved as much as he could, because obviously the fans want to see Special it. Special attraction. Yeah, and I'm just thinking that the main country to take him out was three in the ring. And I'm thinking uh, Storm, Buddy Ray and Rude, they did have enough in yeah. this match, but it was the, the ending of the match that actually... Really I agree, cool. yes. I agree. Um, Sting's heel popped during the match. You could tell he had a moment when he was limping and stuff. And they kind of went to old school style, like I said, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It gets the crowd involved a bit more. And the UK card, again, weren't quite as good as last week, but they were still pretty good. But then again, it was a double TV taping, so I can understand that. Um, and at the end, basically, you get Robert Roode, uh, Buddy Ray not helping Robert Roode and allowing Sting to get the submission victory on Robert Roode. Now, two couple of things here. Um... Sting, okay, Sting getting the win, sends the fans home happy, but God, Robert Root got, but on Robert Root, it should have at least been James Storm getting the, getting the victory on Root if they were going to do it that way. Well, look at this, Sting's not, a, yeah, he's giving the enforcer, but it's not a part of the actual mm -hmm. map, so for him to get the win, yes, it made the fans happy, but again, the people who are watching it, analysing it, yeah. and trying to put it all together, see this as a bit of a negative thing for the pay-per-view. Should have been Storm, I think, in my opinion, especially if you're going to tease that Storm Rude feud, in my opinion. It should have been, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the end of the show. Bully Ray, you're kind of teasing tension between Bully Ray and Rude. So you've got Hardy, you've got Bully Ray, you've got James Storm all want, having something against Rude, which I think this four-way needed because if they just had Rude and Storm, Rude, if they had Rude and Bully Ray teaming up, it would have been made it a little bit less exciting, in my opinion. I think the way they finished it again... Yes, you could have had the Hills team up at the pay-per-view, but the way they've done it now, mm. it's all against all, just the way it should be, yes. It's a fatal four-way, and that's the way, exactly the way it should be. And, you know, Bully Ray is just awesome. Um, right, a couple of, another question here. Um, we, where have Sorensen and Ion been all month on this on the TV show? Just a, just a legit question. They're on the pay-per-view, but they haven't really been on the TV show too much, which is kind of a bit, a bit disappointing, especially with it being a number one contendership match and this being a going show. Just putting it out there. They could have done more with the exhibition tonight. And maybe, maybe have a tag had, match. Yeah, so bigger mm. than what it was. But I'm going to say this, that what they've given us, obviously, tonight yeah. was a pretty solid show. It gave us what we mm. need leading up to the pay-per-view as well as last week's. The first hour was definitely better than the second hour. Uh, the show overall, I guess, solid is the good great word for it. As a show itself, it was probably like, it was a... It was a kind. It was an entertaining show. Well, it's the UK fans. Um, apart from that bit that kind of dragged just after the main event, up until the main event itself, it was a it was an entertaining show. Um, I mean, I'd give the show. I almost want to grade this in two ways. You know, the first half of the show was kind of like B plus. Second half of the show was more like C. So I guess I'm C B minus for the show itself as a go home show. It hyped up everything. When we had seven matches on the card, it hyped up pretty much everything on the card. Tara and Gail Kim was kind of not featured as much as it probably could have been. Sorensen Ion wasn't featured at all. So it, it did a mediocre job, but hype, But at least every all the segments had the segments that did hide the pay per view had enough time to really have good effect on hyping to the pay per view. I'll give it that. Well, overall, the way I felt, yes, when it came to the Garrett Bishop, I was getting really bored. <laughs> but I'm going to give overall a strong B minus. Yeah, no, I'd say same with me. I'll give. I think B minus is a fair grade. It wasn't quite bad enough for a C plus, but it wasn't quite. Good enough to be a B, so no, that's very yeah. true. Uh, so that's that's our thoughts on. Uh, unless you have any more adding thoughts, Andrew. Well, the only thing I can say is that we have another video coming up. All oh, right, the preview video for Against All Odds will be uploaded this Saturday. Make sure you guys check that out, and the review we will be putting out on Sunday, and indeed on TNA Swerve. So um, get your thoughts on this TNA Impact Wrestling show down in that comment section below. And this is our special attraction. Here, NJ, to end the show. So I'll tell you people, as we've had two London shows, please share your thoughts yeah. on how great these two shows have been and what TNA should do is get out the impact zone yeah. and continue doing stuff like this. Leave your thoughts about this whole London tour in the comments below and leave your thoughts on tonight and the build towards the pay-per-view. And I'll say from Mr. Parkin 
and me NJ. Till next time, people. Enjoy the pay-per-view and goodbye.